And here we go. Whoops. This story is called Tony Baroni Loves Macaroni. Who of you likes macaroni? Do you guys like macaroni? Yes or no? Oh, Talia likes macaroni. Oh, Tyler, you don't like macaroni. Jaden likes macaroni. Okay, let's see why Tony Baroni loves macaroni. Tony Baroni. He loved macaroni. He ate it with butter. He ate it with cheese. He ate it for breakfast. He ate it at noon. He ate it for dinner with a big serving spoon. Oh, Mamma Mia, cried Nana Sophia. I cooked lasagna. I roasted potatoes. I fried zucchini and sliced ripe tom tomatoes. No, Nana, please, just macaroni and cheese. Nana made oodles of other good noodles. So she served Tony spinach cannelloni. No, Nana, please. Macaroni and cheese. Nana cooked penne with tomatoes and cheese. Bow ties with broccoli and spaghetti and peas. No, Nana, please. Just macaroni and cheese. Nana served rotini and meat tortellini. Ravioli with yam and rigatoni with ham. No, Nana, please. Just macaroni and cheese. One day, Tony Baroni, who loved macaroni, who ate it with butter, who ate it with cheese, who ate it for breakfast, who ate it at noon, who ate it for dinner with a large serving spoon, knew just what he wanted to eat. Enough macaroni, enough cheese. How about Pizza with tomatoes and peas. Have you ever had peas on a pizza? I've never had peas on a pizza. Now Tony eats pizza for breakfast. He eats pizza at noon. He eats pizza with peas by the light of the moon. The end. We learned about lots of different types of macaroni and different types of pasta. Okay, this story is called Violet Shrink. Violet Shrink wears glasses like her father, Victor, but has much more hair on her head. She likes to listen to music through her purple headphones and make her own comic books under a tent of blankets in her room. At school, when it's time to play outside, Violet likes to spend the time alone. She collects leaves, stones and dandelions to bring home and put on her windowsill. Violet likes birds, especially the birds that visit the feeder in her backyard every day. There are things Violet doesn't like too. Violet doesn't like celery in her soup. She doesn't like brand new crayons breaking the first time she uses them. She doesn't like finding hairs on the kitchen table, even if they're her own. And parties. Violet really does not like parties. Her father reminds her that she likes cake, music and games. And those are all things you can find at parties. Violet wants to tell her father that she does like, that while she likes all those things, she doesn't like them all at the same time. Being around a lot of people makes her palms sweat. Sometimes her ears feel hot or her stomach aches. 
Sometimes she squeezes her teeth together so hard that her head hurts. Violet loves her father very much, even though he often gets her to go to a party by using a word she's never heard before. A word like reception or function or potluck. He tells her to play with the other children and say hello to all the grown-ups. But Violet just wishes she could stay home in her tent with her purple headphones and her comic books. One day, while she is picking celery out of her soup, Violet's father tells her that they have been invited to a little shindig for Cousin Shah. When they arrive at her cousin's house, Violet is horrified to discover that it is a birthday party. Violet spends the entire time hiding under the kitchen table. She imagines that she is a shark, smooth and silver, with a hundred sharp white teeth. She swims in circles and loop-de-loops, hunting for sandwiches to eat. Her ears don't feel hot because sharks don't have ears that stick out the way hers do. And her palms aren't sweating because sharks don't have hands. Two weeks later, Violet's father tells her they are going to an anniversary bash for Auntie Marlene and Uncle Lenny. The word bash reminds her of loud things like drums, fireworks, or pots and pans banging together. Sure enough, bash turns out to be another word for party. Make sure you say hello to everyone, Violet, and play with your cousins, her father says when they get there. No hiding under tables today, okay? Violet wipes her sweaty palms on her pants and squeezes her teeth together until her head hurts. She doesn't hide under a table. She sits quietly at the top of the stairs where no one can see her, legs dangling between the banisters. She imagines she is a snake gold and green as a dandelion, wrapped around the branch of a very tall tree. Balanced on a branch below is the chocolatiest slice of chocolate cake. Violet knows her father isn't trying to be mean. He wants her to go to parties for the same reasons he keeps putting celery in her soup. He thinks it's good for her. But when Violet's, father's, Violet's father tells her that the Shrink family reunion is coming up, she silently goes to her room. There will be a lot more relatives than usual. The more people means more voices, louder voices. Uncle Louis will play his accordion and Uncle Joe will do his weird moose stuck in the mud dance. And all of Violet's aunts will laugh so loud, she'll feel it in the pit of her stomach. Violet isn't hungry anymore, not even for dessert. All she wants to do is crawl into her blanket tent, put her headphones on and draw pictures of bats. But that will have to wait. Dad, I have an important thing to say, Violet says, as he is tucking her into bed for the night. Okay, he says, putting on his listening for real face. I don't like parties. Violet's stomach gives an unpleasant little flutter. Or shindigs, or bashes, or get-togethers, or gatherings. I don't like any of those things. Her dad starts to say what he always says. You like cake, don't you? And you like music, don't you? And you like games, don't you? Yes, Violet replies, but not all at the same time. She tells him how her stomach hurts and her palms sweat and her ears get hot. Her father keeps us listening for real face on the whole time, which makes the words come more easily. And I don't like celery in my soup, she adds. I don't think I ever will. What if I leave out the celery, but put in extra carrots, he asks. 
I don't hate carrots, she replies. Well, that sounds that. Now, what are we going to do about all these parties? I don't know, Violet says, glancing at her blanket tent. The Trink family reunion ends up being quite the wingding, as Violet's father would say. As expected, Uncle Louis plays the accordion, and Uncle Joe teaches all her cousins how to do weird moose st stuck in the mud dance. Everyone laughs loudly, and someone breaks a big ugly lamp that Aunt Mary says she never liked anyway. But for the very first time, Violet's stomach doesn't ache, her palms don't sweat, and her ears don't feel hot, because the shrink family parties late into the evening. As the shrink family parties late into the evening, Violet sits under the dessert table, purple headphones over her ears, a pile of comic books in her lap, and a smile on her face. The end. Sometimes we just have to tell other people how we're feeling so that they can help us through a situation. Okay. That one is not in English, so we won't be reading that one. Okay, giraffe meets bird. The first time giraffe meets bird, he's surprised. The moment bird sees giraffe, he's amazed. Giraffe is fascinated to watch the bird grow. Bird is tickled to try new things. Bird learns that it's easy to make giraffe cross. And giraffe discuss, discovers that it's a cinch to make bird angry. If bird wants giraffe to help, he has to be pleasant, please. If giraffe wants bird to give him a scratch, he has to be polite, thank you. Bird loves to hop from branch to branch. Giraffe enjoys the peace and quiet of a nap. Bird's feathers are ruffled when giraffe tells him what to do. Giraffe is peeved when bird makes a fuss. Bird wants to be alone in his tree. Cheering is hard. Take a hike, giraffe. Giraffe was there first. Sharing is tough. Buzz off, bird. One hot, dry afternoon, giraffe has an itch. Rub, rub, scratch, scratch, scratch. Flutter, flutter, plop. Giraffe is relieved to lose his itch. But why is bird so quiet? Bird is thrilled to have an adventure. But how will he get back in the tree? Just then. There is a strange noise in the tall grass. Crunch, crunch. Yikes, a lion! Luckily, Giraffe sees the bird. He scoops him up and jumps so high, they land in the tree. The light dims as bird finds a cozy spot to nestle in. The stars shine as giraffe finds a comfy place to snuggle in. Tonight, they don't mind sharing the tree. I have never seen a giraffe in a tree. What will they do in the morning? Bird knows that this tree is no place for young giraffes. But giraffe is sure that this tree is no place. That this tree is no place for baby birds. At sunrise, Bird peers up from the top of the tree for any signs of trouble. Giraffe scans below the branches for any trace of danger. With no lines in sight, it's time to leave. 
Giraffe is weepy to bid farewell. Bird is cheery to say goodbye. But they do. And together they set off to find a new home to share. What are they riding on? The end. Look, here's another story about giraffe and bird. Giraffe and bird. It's true that getting along can be difficult. If the bird could tell you, he'd say he can't stand the giraffe. And if the giraffe could tell you, he'd say he can't abide the bird. The bird, you see, makes funny faces at the giraffe. And the giraffe sticks out his long tongue at the bird. This makes the bird twitter at the giraffe ear. Tweet, tweet, tweet. That makes the giraffe invade the bird's personal space. Some days, the giraffe has bad breath. Other days, the bird eats too many berries, which are high in fiber and make him fart. Look, he even made a little poo on the giraffe's face. I don't think that's very nice. Frequently, the giraffe makes loud noises when he chooses food with his mouth open. Often, the bird slurps up a slimy worm in front of the giraffe. Sometimes, the bird prunes his feathers just above the giraffe's head. That's where the, a bird cleans themselves when they prune themselves. So little bits of dust and bugs and feathers will go flying. And that makes the giraffe sneeze. <gasps> Every time the giraffe lets off out a sneeze, the bird is blown right off the telephone wire. Ha ha choo! Flap, flap, flap. And every time the bird is blown off the telephone wire, he flies up to perch right on the giraffe's horns. When the bird perches on the giraffe's horns, the giraffe swats him with his ears. Swat, 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 swat. When the giraffe swats the birds with bird with his ears, the bird picks him with his beak. Pick, 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 pick. The picking makes the giraffe shake his head until they are both dizzy. Dizzy and woozy, they both tumble to the ground. Thud. Oh, look at them all both now bandaged up. They are not getting along very nice. One day, the giraffe loses his patient and shouts at the bird. Scram, bird! The bird gets fed up and shouts back at the giraffe. Get lost, giraffe! So they do. That night, there is a seriously scary storm. All the telephone poles crash to the ground. The giraffe wishes he could hide his eyes under the bird's feathers so he wouldn't see the lightning. The bird wishes he could hide under the giraffe's ears so he couldn't hear the thunder. Bang, boom, crack. <coughs> the next morning, the bird feels glum. He has nowhere to sit and no one to pick and peck. The giraffe feels lonely. There is no one around to pester and perturb him. With no one around to pester him, the giraffe has time to think. The funny thing is that all the giraffe can think about is the bird. What can he do to bring the bird back? The giraffe agrees to help the telephone company for a while. He doesn't have to wait long for the bird to return. He also doesn't have to wait long for the bird to start making funny faces again. Smack, tweet, flap, tweet, flap, smack, swat, 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 pick, 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 tweet, thud. Now it's true that getting along can be difficult. And if you ask these two, the giraffe might say he can't abide the bird. And the bird might say he can't stand the giraffe. 
but we know better. The end. Okay. This story is called The Vole Brothers. Wanted. Two small, ravenous rodents recently arrived from the country. Last seen chomping and chewing on daisies, tulips, and roses. I'm hungry. Me too. Meow. The Vole Brothers. I'm so hungry, I could eat a cat. Shh. Mmm. Something smells good. Quick, throw that cat! Crash and boom! Mmm, pepperoni pizza! Pepperoni pizza? Ah, uh, huh? Hee 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 hee! They're getting away with the pizza! Hey! Yes! We did it! We got the pizza. Woohoo! But where's the pepperoni? You took it! No, you did. Gog! Gog! No, he did! He took the pepperoni! That's our pepperoni! Stop! Thief! Beep beep! Oh no! Come back! That's our pizza! Crunch, crunch, crunch. Ouch! They bit me. Maybe they're hungry. Look at all the things that are eating here. Sweet. I'm starving. Everyone's eating but us. Oh boy! Yummy, yummy! In my tummy. Is the cat going to eat the Vole Brothers? Ding a ling ling. Ta da! Ta da! Yes! Whee! Ta da! Chomp, chomp, chomp. Choo, choo, choo. The end. And that is the story of the Vole Brothers. Okay, let's wait. This story is just loading. This story is called If You're Happy and You Know It. Who's happy? I am. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, smile big and really show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. These animals look really happy. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, smile big and really show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! Look at how happy these animals look! Hooray! That was a silly story just for us. Here's another little silly story just, you know what, I'm going to save that one for Thursday. Okay. These are quite fun. Okay, here's another one. Do your ears hang low? Do you know that song? Let's see when a bunny sings the song. Do your ears hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a continental soldier? Do your ears hang low? 
Look at those bunnies ears, he's hanging upside down. Do your ears stick out? Do they wiggle all about? Can they hear me when I whisper? Can they hear me when I shout? Can you use them to go spying? Can you flap them to go flying? Do your ears stick out? Woo, here's another one. Do your ears like toys? Do they just hear lots of noise? Will you use them in a game or to hear me say your name? When they're tickled by your sweater, is there anything that's better? Are your ears like toys? The end. I really like that one. That one was really fun. Okay. We have time for one more short story. We don't have uh, time for another long story. Let's see. Well, nope, that one's not quite right. Okay, well, let's read this one. Breakfast at the zoo. The zoo animals were hungry, but the zookeeper was late. He was asleep in his bed. Wake up! You are late! cried the hungry animals. Give us some breakfast! But the zookeeper did not wake up. Wake up! We are hungry! Is the snakes. Come and give us some food. But the zookeeper did not wake up. We are hungry! Wake up! cried the elephants. Give us some breakfast! But the zookeeper did not wake up. Wake up! You are late! roared the lions and tigers. Come and give us some food! But the zookeeper did not wake up. Wake up! We are hungry! Give us some breakfast! cried the monkeys. But the zookeeper did not wake up. Wake up! You are late! cried the hungry parrots. Give us some food! Come and give us some food! The zookeeper woke up. Here is your breakfast, said the zookeeper. I'm sorry I am late. Okie dokie, my little lot of chokies. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed story time. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed story time with me. I found some really nice stories today and I'm excited to find some more for tomorrow. And I will see you tomorrow morning for our morning ring. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. And I really enjoyed seeing your germ pictures. Those of you that sent them to me, I saw Tyler's and I saw Nathan's. They are looking amazing. So enjoy your art and I will see you all tomorrow. Very nice, Casey. I see yours too. Beautiful. Awesome job, guys. Okay, bye-bye, everybody.